Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Laurie Smith on Block Talk Radio. Good evening. It is 10 o'clock p.m. here in Calgary, Alberta. And uh, this is Mount Bethel Christian Bible Study, Getting Real with God. And I'm just glad to be here. Glad to be able to do this show. And I'm just very thankful to the Lord for providing providing everything for me and uh, allowing me the, you know, the, everything to do this. You know, like, um, He's truly my source. And I just I just thank God every day for allowing me this boy, this avenue to to raise my voice and to to have my voice out there and I appreciate everybody who's taking the time to listen to my shows you know I'm not a minister I'm not a pastor or anything like that I just like to do this show once a week um, on Sundays to to share you know God's word and just to share what he's done in my life what I've what I've seen him doing in other people's lives and you know just sort of continue on and, and I'm on my healing journey and everybody knows that listens to my shows uh, one child abuse survivor to another and child abuse prevention and human rights abuse prevention is up to us. Um, you know, it's been a long, hard road for a lot of us. And um, years ago, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have uh, necessarily reached out to read the Bible. You know, I wasn't into the Bible. Um, I wouldn't have I wouldn't really reached out to God. I used to just pray that, you know, that he would forgive me and that, uh, you know, for, for sins that I've committed in the past and that, you know, pray my way into heaven sort of thing. And so four years ago, I met the Lord, and uh, May 22nd, 2007, I'll never forget it, and I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and I uh, I gave my, my whole being to him, and I said, you know, Lord, you know, you do something with me, <laughs> you know, I, I, I am no longer my own, you know, thy will, not mine, and I was really committed, and I still am. And um, just committed my life to the, to serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. And um, so I'm happy. I'm extremely happy to be able to do these shows. And uh, years ago, like I'm, I like to point this out to people because it's such a transformation. I mean, people who didn't know me before wouldn't know, wouldn't recognize, or even know that I was having these issues or was feeling these, this, these feeling this way about certain things. And you know, I really just had a problem with God for so long. <laughs> Because I just couldn't see how he could allow these things to happen, and I was, I was like a lot of the people out here in the world today who are suffering and who are, who are going through so much pain and enduring so so many horrible things, and thinking, where is God, you know, and how can he allow this, and how can, if there's a God, um, how can this be happening, you know, and I I used to ask the same question, especially when I was young and I could see my family just disintegrating right before my eyes and see the destruction that was going on and. You know, my, my family was destructed, dis- destroyed before I was even born. So I was born into this mess. But I, I could see the pain and the suffering and the misery that was going on with my brothers and my mother and my sister. And, you know, just the the horror of growing up in this abusive hellhole of a, of a home. And so, you know, I, I used to question God, and I, especially when he started taking people that I loved, um, my, my best friend being one, and my brother, another one that, that he took that I really cared about. <clears throat> made a huge difference in my life, those people. So when he took them to be home with him, I was really angry and upset with God. And I, I used to scream and curse at him in the backyard at one point when my friend died. Um, she got hit and killed by a drunk driver, and she knew three three months before that that's what was going to happen to her And um, because she had a dream. And um, I was just devastated. You know, I, I couldn't believe that God would take her and not me. And I wrote about that in A Life of Death and Redemption. Um, if anybody would like to get a hold of my book, all the proceeds are going to Dreamcatchers for Abuse Children. And um, that, you know, I couldn't figure out why he would take her and not me. I was like, God, you know I'm suffering down here. You know what I'm going through. So, see, I believed in God. I used to talk to him. <laughs> and I'd be like, you know what I'm going through. And you're going to you're gonna take my friend and you're the, the one person that was good to me. You're going to take her and you're going to leave me here to suffer in this hell hold of a home, you know, where my mother hates me, um, it, which was truly honest. I mean, mother, my mother could not show love towards me and never really knew how and never could. Um, just, you know, had a lot of animosity towards me because I was born out of rape and she hated the very act that produced me and, you know, she made it very clear to me that that's why she couldn't love me and that she hated me and I should have died with the other stillborn babies. So I, I really want to make this clear to people how absolutely horrific, you know, that type of, of situation is for kids out here who are being abused, you know. And um, my heart was just uh, was just so full of anger and, you know, I used to curse God in the backyard. I'd curse him and uh, out loud. 
And so I had real problems with God and Christianity. And so I like to do this show because this show, <laughs> this really shows the turn of what God can do and what he can really, what what by by opening up my heart to the Lord, which is what I did May twenty second, 2007. I actually opened up the door and let him in. He was waiting. He was waiting there all the time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Uh, he was waiting for me to open up that door. And he, you know, he knocks and he says, he, he says, you know, he will enter in. You open up the door, he'll come in. But he's not going to force his way in. You have to literally open up your heart to him. And I did. And, and uh, May twenty second, two thousand seven, is very private thing. I was in my apartment and getting ready to go look for a job, and I just felt his presence. And I thought, oh my God, I'm going to let him in. I'm going to do it. So I just, you know, I just, he was standing right above me. The the Lord Jesus Christ, praise God, the Spirit of God. And I knew it, and I was like, oh, thank God he's here. Praise God, because I knew my salvation was here. I was like, oh, thank you, Lord, hallelujah. And so you want to talk about a spiritual experience. I mean, that was so beautiful. I'll never forget it. And um, I knew that I had died away. My old Lori had died away on the cross, and my, I was a reborn new reborn creation in Christ hallelujah and I knew that I better learn the word of God and I so I immediately started studying the word and uh, I, I t- a transformation happened to me that you know most people would not I really want to spell this out for people you know like like a month prior to May 22nd 2007 I was contemplating suicide again <laughs> like my whole life had been a series of suicidal plans you know like I mean I was always planning on how I was going to just kill myself and, you know, how I could end my, mainly to get out of the pain I was in. It wasn't to necessarily try to get back at somebody or, you know, because I knew that none of my family would care. So it was, wasn't like it was kind of a, you know, well, if I kill myself, these people, you know, they'll know how much they hurt me sort of thing. Like, my family didn't care and they still don't. And so, you know, I knew that it wasn't that. It was mainly just because I couldn't stand the pain anymore that was going on in my heart. And I couldn't stand uh, the pain and the suffering that had been, enduring since it, since I was born and I just wanted out you know what I mean and I wanted out of the pain and I, I kept thinking how am I going to get out of the pain doing alcohol and drugs weren't doing it. I, I, I did al- I did drugs and alcohol until I was 21 and decided that I didn't want to spend a life in the gutter or in jail or prison or wherever or be you know killed in some horrific drug deal gone bad or whatever and so I changed my ways and got off the drugs and alcohol they weren't doing anything for me anyway and so you know, uh, then after that, I just tried to stay really busy and was doing things. I never really found any peace in my heart. Never found any. I could never get rid of that pain that was in my heart. You know, and I just, I just used to sit around and think, how am I going to get rid of this pain? And I, you know, suicide is never the answer. And I hope if anybody's listening to me, that you will listen to, the, to my voice and remember this always. Suicide is not an option. And please don't ever do that. Don't ever give up. I'm so thankful that God met me. May 22nd, 2007, just after I had another issue, you know, which was around April of 2007, I was planning my suicide again, and I was sitting around thinking, you know, I want out of this pain, and I was on the couch, I was going to self-injure, and then I was thinking, I'll just kill myself. I went from, you know, wanting to self-injure, which I was going to rip myself up really badly with a screwdriver, and I decided against that. Because I thought, well, well, I'm just going to end up in the, you know, bleeding and, and have to go get stitches, and then I'll nobody's going to care anyway. So I thought, why am I going to do that? That's stupid. So I stopped myself from doing that, and then I thought, no, I'll just I'll just kill myself. I'll just I'll just do it. I'll I'll end it. And this was normal thought thought process for me, right? I've been doing this forever. My family was suicidal, so it was just something that we all did. And um, you know, something stopped me that day, and something spoke to me and I think it was God and he, God was telling me why are you going to do this why are you going to give up you know if you give up all you're going to do is allow your parents these these abusers who hurt you and, and a sibling to win the fight all they're going to do is get their glory because they will have done what they wanted to do which was destroy you and 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 at the time I wasn't thinking of the devil I was I was thinking of, of my parents and my sibling who caused me so much pain and I was like, you know, that's so true. If I if I do this and I self-injure or I kill myself, all I've done is allow them to win the fight. So I'm staying here. And immediately made a commitment to myself and to God. I said, okay, God, I will no longer ever, ever, you know, plan my suicide again. Never. I will allow myself to heal. Well, <clears throat> that was just a month later when I was born again. So it was probably within about three weeks, I would say, from that incident. 
And so I was doing pretty good, I thought, you know, and I was getting ready to look for jobs and stuff and was just coming out of the shower and had my hair in a towel and there was the Lord Jesus, praise God, around 10 o'clock in the morning, somewhere around there, um, to meet me in my apartment. I was like, thank you, Lord Jesus, praise God, because I knew that I had just been given the best, the most ultimate precious gift, and that's eternal life. And that's eternal life with God the Father, not eternal life in, in hell. We're talking eternal life, not eternal death, you know. And I was like, oh, thank God, thank God for my salvation. So I knew immediately I had been born, reborn, a new creation, a new creature unto God. And I was like, oh, thank you, hallelujah, thank you, Father. So then, um, you know, I had to cry for about, I don't know, two three weeks. I spent two or three weeks on the couch just crying and crying and crying because the Lord was healing my heart because, just prior to that, I was wanting to kill myself and, you know, had a lot of stuff going on and a lot of pain and anger. And God was cleansing me and with the Holy Spirit was cleansing my heart. And I, I was reading the Bible. I got a Bible a few weeks later within a short time after I was born again. And I started watching Christian programming. And, of course, I'm still on my own, very much on my own. My sweetheart was in my life, but he actually had no idea this was going on. Um, and, you know... We didn't live together or anything, and he's he's terminally ill, so he's sick, and so we weren't really, you know, I wasn't necessarily dragging him down with my stuff. So he didn't even really kind of know what was going on. I was really much on, very much on my own during this three-week period or four-week period where I just sit and cry on the couch and just allow the Lord to heal my heart and to 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 cast out and to to to, to shove out the anger and the hatred and the the misery and the you know the the evil thoughts and the bad stuff right out of my heart and and replace it with love and goodness and mercy and compassion and kindness and everything that is good and everything that is truth and light and love and you know all this stuff came into my heart and I remembered you know feeling this way different times in my life where I had met people that had shown me some really, some some awesome love and compassion I mean it's not like my own family couldn't do that for me but I had other people do that for me in my lifetime and of course I recognize it. And so I was like, well, thank God, you know, like I started to feel so, so much better. And um, I just, you know, I was so thankful that the Lord met me on that day. So that's why I like to do this show because, you know, I'm coming from a place that was uh, hell, you know, that's why I like to describe it as being like a living hell. Um, you know, evil, evil stuff going on in my home and being subjected to, forced to watch and evil stuff, forced to be a part of evil stuff and po- forced to be having evil thoughts. You know what I mean? Like... My parents were murderous, they were suicidal, they were uh, abusive on every front. And, you know, expect it, it, what society would think that the kids aren't going to turn out the same way. <laughs> you know? It's like, you know, you know, the apple really never falls that far from the tree. And so, you know, I, I had so much uh, bad stuff in my heart, you know, and murderous thoughts and uh, just horrible things, you know. And from I, a, a complete transformation happened to me. You know, I realized that that really the only thing that really made sense to me then was love. And God is love. And so I started really getting into the Bible, and I thought, my God, this is the truth out out there. What I could see out of my apartment window, you know, my balcony window, is the lie, you know. If my parents, you know, were following the devil, they were following Satan, you know, they were not showing us love, they were not showing us compassion, they were not showing us mercy, there was no love or truth, or mercy or compassion in my home growing up. And all around the world we see this is going on, you know. And so many survivors have to deal with this, you know, having to endure these horrors, uh, these horrors that they never should have to endure um, at the hands of somebody else because of the, the, the twisted corruption, the twisted uh, evil stuff from Satan. And, and it just, you know, it started to make sense to me. I was like, oh, yeah, I, I can totally see it now. And, and I started to realize that God was there the whole time. And that God could not intervene. He's not going to force his way in. We have to want to serve him. We have to decide, are we going to serve the devil or are we going to serve God? You know, It's a clear choice. It's a very simple choice. And um, it's not a simple walk. It's a little bit. It's not easy to walk, walk this love walk, and to, to you know, have uh, you know, to to be following the Lord Jesus and to be doing what God wants us to do. That can be very hard because, in this world, we all know, you know, it's tricky. There's a lot of temptation and there's a lot of problems. But, you know, it's real simple to make the decision on who we're going to serve. You know, and and I I mean I had people present this to me before you know and I before I was born again and of course I, I was always a little offended by it. It just didn't make any sense to me and I thought you know once I was born again I realized no this is absolute truth 
you know, and I, I was serving the devil, didn't even know it. I thought I was a good person, and I thought, hey, I'm not out here trying to hurt people like my parents, you know, and I'm out here trying to do good for the world, and, you know, I'm not a bad person. I've done some horrible things that I would sure like to be forgiven for, but, you know, I mean, we've all done some terrible things we probably need forgiven for. But the thing is, you know, I, I thought, you know, I, I was serving the devil. I thought I could just pray my way into heaven, and I didn't realize that I needed I needed the blood of Christ. I needed that sacrifice, that ultimate sacrifice for God to come down in the flesh, you know, to, for God to have to come down to reconcile us back to himself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, the man, you know, coming down and taking the form of flesh, born of the Virgin Mary and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I praise God. I'm so happy and thankful that he did that and that he was true and, and that he that he stuck to the mission, you know, because huh, well, it's the only reason why I've been blood-bought. Uh, you know, he went to the cross. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It's not a sad thing. It's the most awesome thing in the whole world ever, you know, and I thought, I won the lottery. I won the most, the biggest, best, most biggest prize ever, and that's eternal life in, in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. I've been paid with. I've been bought redeemed, purchased by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the, the precious Lamb of God. Hallelujah. That makes me so happy, you know. So I just, I like to share this with people because I know there's so many people out there who are hurting and who have been through so much. And, and, and you know, it doesn't mean like because, oh, yeah, because I've been born again. And um, I, when I first was born again, I, I was so overwhelmed by the by the Holy Spirit that I actually started to become a little bit higher than, uh, you know, higher than than is necessary to do anything on this earth. You know what I mean? The the Holy Spirit, when when you're actually really so um, surrounded and 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 in, in, enclosed by the Holy Spirit, it's real easy to turn a blind eye on what's actually happening out there in the world. And and that's why a lot of people become you know almost uh, allow themselves to become too almost too holier than they need to be because then they can't do anybody any good here on the earth. It's you know what I mean. We have to be able. There has to be a way to be realistic. You know what I mean? Like we're we're still here in the flesh, you know? Um and I and in order to be part of this human experience, we still have to be in the body, right? I mean, you know, like the apostle Paul said, present in the body, you know, we're present in the world, present in the body, uh, you know, out of the body, present with Christ. I mean, immediately we're, we'll be with Christ when we leave when we leave this flesh body and we leave this earth. And I mean, you know, but in the meantime, you know, if we're going to to truly be God's God's voice and God's hands and God's feet and allow him to speak through us and allow him to work through our hands and to work through our feet, then we truly have to be able to see what's going on. We cannot walk around with blinders on. You know? And so from, that's the, that, that was hard for me at first because I really want, I, I wanted to shut out this mess out here and just stay in that, um, in that precious Holy Spirit, that, that, um, what do you want? Whatever you want to call it, that demonish, that dunamish, uh, whatever you want to call it, that whole that cloud, right? That just encompasses you because that's what happened to me. I had I had some awesome experiences, and um, so you know I thought, well, no, I don't want to do that. I, I want to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. I want Him to work through me. I want God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to work through me. And to show me what they want done, thy you know thy will, Lord. That's what I say every day, thy will, Lord, not mine, because it's just so easy to 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 get off and, and be doing stuff that we want to do, you know, and not fulfill what what God wants us to do here on the earth. And so, you know, I thought, well, then you know, if I'm going to do that, then I need to still you know be down here, not on cloud nine. And um, if I'm going to truly help people, then I need to be able to still you know, understand what's actually the reality of what's happening out here and that that is that Satan is is out here seeking and search, searching and seeking for those who he can devour, who he can take over, who will serve him. And, you know, I, I like what Jesus had to say. I mean, you know, he's very, very specific. You know, you can't serve two masters. You will either serve God or you will serve the devil, but you can't serve both, you know. And so we have to be very, very careful and, and uh, if we're going to serve God and really... Um, diligently seek him and seek seek his will, seek his word, you know, and try to understand his word with the help of the precious Holy Spirit, praise God. Try to understand, you know, our spiritual, um, our spirituality, you know. We're, we're not just a flesh body walking around with a mind, like, you know, or a soul. We have a spirit. And the spirit is what goes on with the spirit and the soul. That's it, that's it for eternity. And, you, and, you know, it's, where do you want to end up? 
You know, where do we want to end up? Do we want to end up in hell, or do we want to end up in heaven? And a lot of people don't believe in hell and and all this. And you know, that's their choice. You know, I mean, I always say, hey, that's everybody's choice. You can believe it or not. Uh, I still believe that whether we believe it or not doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. <laughs> Like, I can go around and be in denial all I want, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. You know, same with child abuse. I mean, lots of people think that child abuse doesn't exist, too. They can walk around in denial all they want and pretend that it's all great, but it's uh, and that people don't actually rape their children. But, you know, in reality, that's what's happening, right? It does exist. And just because we want to believe it doesn't happen doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, you know? Um, exactly. You know, I've never been one to try to... Um, um, to not be realistic. Even when I was using drugs, it wasn't necessarily to escape reality. I mean, I I was trying to escape the abuse, but I wasn't escaping reality. I knew what had happened to me, and I knew what was going on in my family, and I knew the... I, I wasn't like it was a denial type thing. I've never been in denial. So, um, yeah, just truth means everything to me, and God is truth. So there you go. This, this just... It's so awesome. You know, I'm so thankful that the Lord that the Lord came into my heart and came into my life and changed me and got me going on the path that he needed me to go on, you know, and 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 I and I have to sit there and I have to think, okay, when I was a child and I was crying out, you know, and and wishing that God would change things in my home, you know, because I used to I used to pray that, to God that, you know, that my parents would stop fighting, you know. That was a big one. I was always praying that God would show my parents how to love each other and that they would stop fighting because mainly most of the abuse was coming stemming from that. And uh, just they're their steady fighting, steady steady hurting each other. And I used to pray, and I'd say, God, you know, help my parents to love each other and to stop fighting, and they never did. You know, and I started to feel very let down because I was thinking, how could you allow this to go on, you know? And then, you know, just, I don't even think I prayed that my mother wouldn't abuse me or that my dad wouldn't abuse me. I don't think that even entered into my mind. But I used to pray to God that, you know, he would, uh, why he would take people away from me that I loved, my best friend and my, my brother, people in my life that actually were good to me and did did good things for me, you know what I mean? And I thought, why would he take them and leave me here with a mother who hates me, who's <laughs> trying to kill me, you know what I mean? Like, why? And and a, and a father who hates me and, and thinks I'm just trash and evil and the, the family's black sheep of the family and all this, you know? And I thought, why would he leave me in this mess, you know? So I had a lot of problems with you know, the whole idea of God and, 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 and whether he was a good God or not. And But when I was born again, uh, you know, and I was older, obviously, you know, my 40, 41 years old, I mean, I realized that it's not God doing this, it's the devil, you know. It's Satan, you know, and I had enough uh, information about that through the years, you know, um, to realize, you know, and I believed it because I'm a Christian and because I was brought up uh, with a Christian. My dad was a Christian, right? So he was preaching the Bible all the time and, of course, telling me that I was of the devil and I was going to hell and um, that our mother was a whore and a harlot and a slut and she was going to hell and that we were all going to burn in hell and uh, and he wouldn't see us because he'd be in heaven and we would be down burning in hell because he was, he was, a, he was, a, he was a bad man. <laughs> I like to point that out. But, um, you know, hey, he's, he's a born-again Christian. So, I mean, is he saved? I, I do believe he is. Is he going to stand in judgment? Absolutely. We, we're all going to stand in judgment. And this is where my dad is kind of, I hope that he realizes that he's going to stand in judgment for the way that he treated his wife and his children and everybody else on the planet, whatever. We, we're all going to stand in judgment. And so I believe that, you know, and hey, whether we believe it or not, I believe it's true. So even if we choose not to believe it, I still believe it's, it's true. So... You know, I, I do believe the Bible is 100 percent truth, and um, we are going to stand in judgment. And um, you can't think that we're going to be getting away with all this stuff. You know, you can't do these things and think that there's some possible way out of it. And some people would say, "Oh, that's just you know, our, the, the, a certain way that the human psyche will deal with the conscious, and you know, that we would feel bad about certain things, and we would think other people should too." And so, you know, it's it's just mankind's way of dealing with, uh, you know, thinking about these things. And I'm thinking, I think there's a little bit more to it than that. You know what I mean? So we can excuse it away all we want. But for for everybody has a right to believe what they want. I totally believe that. You know, and I, I it's, you know, so that's why. I mean, hey, I mean, I believed what I wanted to for a long, long time. And um, but you know, I just it just makes sense to me. 
It just makes sense to me because the, the laws of nature prove a lot of this stuff. You know what I mean? It's like what you reap, what, what, what you sow is what you reap. If you if you sow discord and you sow hatred, you will reap hatred and discord. You know, and it's like, and my parents were prime examples of that. You know, they sowed uh, hatred and abuse and and uh, disdain for their children, uh, reject rejected their children, and then when their when their children turn around and reject them, they wonder why. Well, you know. Look, my mother, she's 16 years in the grave. So, I mean, she's, you know, and, and she knew that we loved her anyway. We all loved my mother. But my dad, you know, he, he wondered why, you know, his children don't really just rally around him, even though, you know, some of my siblings are still there for him, um, the, the two that are left. But, you know, he just, he sowed this discord. He sowed this, this hatred, this abuse, this horror, this evil garbage into our lives, you know, and sowed it. And, and he, now he's reaping it. You know, and so you know what what you sow is what you reap, and so there's two. That's just one of of you know God's laws that that He put in motion. You know that's that's huge because in every area of your life that's the way it is, and so you know you just I just believe that it's just so absolute so true. You know that there is one God, and there is one Creator, one one awesome Father. You know, and some people call God the Mother. You know. What, uh, the Father, Creator, the Mother, you know, uh, the one true God, the one. And God says, "I am that I am." I mean, praise the Lord when you when you when you when you get into Exodus and and you start reading there, and God's talking to Moses and He says, "I am, I am." I mean, praise God, Hallelujah. I mean, He He is, <laughs> and He created us, and you know, and and I think that's awesome. That's just awesome. I'm so happy to, you know, to to really. For the first time, know who my father is, my real true father, my 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 father creator. I'm very comfortable saying father, you know, probably a little bit more comfortable than saying mother. My mother hated me and tried to kill me. Um, so, you know, for me to say my mother, just is not very comfortable. I, I'd prefer to say my father. <laughs> so I, I, I totally go along with the Bible, my father, you know. And my father loves me, my my my, my father in heaven, God the Father. And he loves me just as much as he loves Jesus. And guess what? He loves you just as much as he loves Jesus. He loves us all. He didn't want one of us to... to. He didn't want to lose one of us. Not one. He says that his salvation is for every man, for every woman, for everyone. This was not just for a certain select few. This was for everyone, anyone that would call upon the name of the Lord. Praise God. I mean, hallelujah. You know... I, I'm so thankful that he that he counted me in to be saved. Praise God, you know. And and uh, so reach out to him, you know, if you're having a hard time. I, people used to tell me that they'd be like, "Well, just keep trusting in the Lord, keep trusting in God, uh, reach out to him when you're feeling down. You know, he'll be there for you." And I used to kind of, when I was younger, be offended by that. Then when I got older, I thought, "Well, they're just being nice. That's fine." And then you know. I started to do that. I started to to reach out to him, and and once I opened up my heart to him, that that was it. I mean, I was I was in like so fast, you know. I was like, oh praise God, because I could feel that it was it was my time, my salvation, and I I could literally see with my spirit eyes the Lord Jesus, praise God. And so you know, reach out to him because he is there all the time, and he says he says I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. And all we have to do is open up our hearts to him. He's not going to force his way in, you know. And he's 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 he got his spirit. He's not walking the flesh, you know. He came down as Jesus in the flesh, but now Jesus has gone up to be with the Father, sitting on the right hand of the throne. Praise the Lord! And He is coming again. Praise God! The King is coming. Hallelujah! So you know, reach, reach out to him if you're having trouble and and you really. You know, you just feel like so down and whatnot. You know, he's there for you. Praise God. He's been he's there for all of us. He's been there waiting this whole time for us to be with him. Praise the Lord. So have a great night, everybody. God bless you all. I'll keep you all in my prayers. And everybody that hears this this uh, this show tonight, I'll just, you know, I hope you're just blessed and, and that God blesses you. And more and more that your cup just, just fills up and spills over in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a great night, everybody. Talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.